<laughs> well, hi, I'm, I'm Richard Torres. I'm the deputy for DTS. <laughs> I guess we have everybody. I don't know. I'm Randall Sykes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Randall. <laughs> and the... Mike Costa, Hawaii okay, Teamsters, I-96. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the approval of the uh, March 19th, uh, uh, 2008 uh, minute meeting, uh, meeting minutes. Okay, right. Is there any corrections to this? We'll say no corrections. Motion to approve. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody objecting? No. Okay. Nobody's abstaining. Okay. Unfinished business. Uh, well, I was going to, I was going to comment, uh, if you remember at the last meeting, I reminded you that you don't have to have a motion to approve the minutes, that we can do that by unanimous consent, and it saves time. I also wanted to, uh, well, when I was asked if I would clarify something, I mentioned in, in the last meeting about the, the time when we had the, the motion that was before us, and somebody said, you know, I moved to table it because they didn't want to consider it in the meeting and I said that's not the appropriate way of doing it. Tabling says I've got something more important that I've got that, that has, needs to be done now. So we want to stop and then take up the table item later in the meeting because of something important. I mentioned also the, the uh, postpone to a certain time or to a given time. If you do that, then the motion will occur again in the meeting because when that time comes, it's all automatically called back up because that's what you've told them to that certain time. If you postpone indefinitely, that kills a motion because it has no time to come back up and it will not be considered again in that meeting. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was the one who made the error on the table. And the reason that I requested to table the motion was a miscalculation that I thought the presenters of that motion would be arriving later in the meeting. They never arrived. Okay. So it was my error to request a table thinking they would arrive. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Um, we now have a for new business the Wainai Coast Emergency Access Road, and Mike Oshiro, the Acting Traffic Engineering Des Design Chief of the Department of Transportation Services, will make a presentation. Is he here? Oh. <laughs>
section here and this Pakeke Road section here. What we are planning or expect to complete construction by the end of the year is this red portion which is a Pakeke Road extension and this section here which is Telenua Street extension. So once those are all completed, you'll be able to get from here to these roads all the way around get all the way down to here without having to come back to Farrington Highway. So the part of the meetings were discussed whether these sections, the red section, would be open to the public or not, or get closed. And the community felt that this should be open only during emergencies. So therefore, um, emergency management and Honolulu Police Department has keys to gates that are have these roads closed at this time. So during emergencies, police department and emergency management will determine um, you know, whether the emergency is serious enough that uh, these roads are needed to bypass um, situations on current and highway. So Pedaduo Place is expected to start construction in July of this year. So by the end of this year, we should be able to get all the way here, all the way to the section. So along this whole route, we can avoid Barrington Highway. Uh, we have another small section, it's hard to see right here, the new section that we are planning to design and construct this section so that would extend the area where you don't have to get the panic in all the way to this point of view. Um, this section, this purple section, um, right now it's in negotiation with uh, a new buyer is looking into acquiring this property <coughs> and uh, at that time we will try to work with him to have this portion of the road completed and this would go further into the car. So that you will be able to avoid the parent and hiring much further. And there is, right now, there is no um, connection from Wainai to Makaha because we have not been able to find a feasible route uh, at this time. Is there any questions? Um, well, if you ask any questions, please identify yourself and your organization. All right. Uh, do we have any questions from the CAC members first? Yeah, I have, I have a series of questions, Mike. I'm David Brown. I'm with the Wine and Neighborhood Board. Mm -hmm. uh, in the development of this land, there was a there was a, a, a study that was conducted. Is that correct? And that was conducted by the city. There was an EIS done. Okay, and the majority of. Uh, Research and engineering was done uh, with the community involved from the, the four different aupa that you listed, yeah? Correct. Yeah. Uh, was there any input from the emergency services themselves or HPD or the fire department? 
Um, they were involved in the, uh, you know, after we met with the communities and then we worked with them as far as we could get once again. What's the situation in your, uh, in your opinion of that? This emergency road really, it ends up bottlenecking right back at Drinkton Road, which is a pinch off point. Um, uh, right there at the, the northeastern side, which is still not a Cooley proper, all the way up there you go. Here. Yeah. There is a section right here where, where we were not able to uh, be able to provide an access off the of Farrington Highway. It's a small, uh, right in here, a small section right here. So there was that area where um, you know, we were not able to, to get a <coughs> route off the Farrington Highway. I mean, as a, only having a couple of years at this, uh, spending some time looking at all the history of how this road was, uh, from the preconcepts, the design, looking at the WCE Air website, uh, looking at a lot of the, uh, the background. Uh, to me, this looks like a series of detours, but in the event of uh, a natural disaster in that area, along that coastline, uh, you've got a series of <laughs> loops that reconnect you at any one point back to uh, to Farrington Highway and that ultimately end up bottlenecking right back along the same route within a pinch point, which is where you had your uh, laser pointer before. Uh, and I've, I've spoken with more recently uh, with HPD and with the fire department and they both see this as a major problem. Okay, when we you know, did this, this was um, Farrington Highway State. Yes. And, you know, I think the Wai'anae community has been asking for a uh, alternate route, access route out of uh, Wai'anae through the Kolaos and down to Kunia Road. So um, what the city did at that time was uh, Mayor Harris, um, because the state, well, I mean, it wasn't moving on it. Right. But, um, you know, the, the city decided to uh, provide this alternate route. It's not really the best avenue, but it does, uh, you know, service. Like there are that pinch point where you can't, you, know, you have to come back to Farrington. But people from uh, that pinch point on, you know, there's this whole section of Farrington Highway that you do not have to get to because there is any, uh, you know, what do you call it, emergencies on that section. Right, many of us in the community, <coughs> Uh, aside from the points that you're going to be connecting, already use these loops, these uh, a lot of these loops, these detour loops, in and out of the uh, community. And again, you know, you guys are helping us out greatly by putting a grid system where a grid system doesn't exist. Do you uh, see this as solving the problem? <coughs> um, I wouldn't say solving the problem, okay. but you know, it's helping out the situation. I think. Um, like you said, a lot of these, a lot of you, the residents know about these back roads already. Yeah. But, you know, there's a section here, Park Hill Road, where we're spending almost a million dollars to open this up to get from here to here. Mm -hmm. And there's also this Hedeloa extension, which will you know, get you through these areas. Right. And I think if uh, we can solve this with the new, uh, the new owners of Hawaii Road, you know, there's going to be a whole area that will be open. No. Yeah, you guys know some of these back routes, but yeah. there is, and this is what we met with the community and the uh, Wai'anae sustainable community. Right. They're the ones that brought this up, but there were some choke points, as you mentioned, that we had to, to construct to keep them off the uh, Is there any, more, uh, any other person? Okay. Uh, I'm Barney, George Ed from the Wine I Call. Identify yourself, please. Okay, okay. I'm kind of the voice crying in the wilderness here, I think. Uh, the whole thing is is uh, kind of mind boggling trying to use it. I've, I've had occasion to twice to run into some of this uh, back roads uh, uh, emergency access thing. And there's no signage and no no uh, police or anybody uh, guiding, uh, it's just a, a, a total confusion. The other thing is that, and you're right, uh, we had in this 
goes back 20, at least 20 to 25 years looking for an alternate drug. That's what the Wyandotte Coast needs. We say Wyandotte Coast Emergency Access Road. Uh, what kind of emergencies are we talking about? The one emergency that is going to happen in, uh, every two years, and it, it's recurring, it's never going to stop, is tsunamis. There is no place on the island that is worse than what you feel up there in case of a tsunami. That bridge that goes no place will be inundated with water come the time for emergencies. Seems to me that what we've got here is just a colossal waste of money. Instead of giving us something to, to get people and get people off the road, off the uh, so-called highway, called Farrington. It's not a highway, it's, it, uh, it's a uh, local road that goes through four little towns and uh, widening doesn't do anything. It still means that in order for anybody to get to the beach, they've got to cross four lanes of traffic. <coughs> And that traffic, by the way, includes probably the biggest trucking concern in, on the state. And all of those trucks and, and regular cars, people trying to get to work, have to go on that route. They've got to go across that four lanes of traffic. Did you have a question? Okay. Uh, the one in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the person in the back, identify yourself? Hey, uh, David Joe, Federal Rental uh, my question is, the access from Wainai to Makaba, where the bridge is. Yeah. You know, how, how about, how are you guys going about fixing that area? Because sometimes the water get over, overfilled and cover the bridges and make it a big danger. Talking about TV drive. Yeah. yeah. Um, that portion where, where, where we are not doing anything, I think the, State was looking at fixing that bridge, but I don't know what happened to that. But we are not going that far. We are going to uh, <coughs> Kalawa and uh, at the end of Kalawa. The reason why I ask is because when there's heavy rain, it kind of eliminates what comes from my night. There's no turn away. Yes, we understand that. But, uh, um, we have no way of. Uh, we're not going to be doing anything for that. Any other questions? All right, Chair Carroll, if I may. We're, okay. Were you aware? Are you or are you aware of the four hundred thousand dollar earmark uh, congressional dollars that were set aside uh, in two thousand and five for the DOT to conduct a Wai'anae Coast Emergency Access Road study? Uh, are you aware we, of those dollars? Yeah, we heard we, are you aware that they've never spent those dollars? They, the state has never conducted the study? Are you aware of that? Yes. Uh, what are your concerns with that, and where do you think that should go? Well, uh, the monies came in 2005. We completed our EIS for this project in 2002. With city monies? With city monies. The reason why I think we didn't use federal monies, because this was an uh, emergency access route, which was the roads weren't going to be built up to any kind of real wide standards with curb gutters, sidewalks, <coughs> street lights. This was something as an emergency in case people had to get from Wai'anae to Nanakuni. There's a serious series of back roads that they can get to. So the thing, were, and when these roads are going to be opened <coughs> up, it's all going to be monitored by emergency management and police. So they're going to be monitoring it all the way. Okay. So it's, you know, when you use federal money, you're going to have to build it. So it's and that's my question. I mean, was the city coordinating with the state, and is the city aware of what the intention uh, from our congressional delegation was when they went for that money to provide for this uh, state-level federal highway study? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Any you. Any more questions? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, Randolph Sykes with Oahu and Field. Um, you mentioned that the community uh, had uh, concerns, and as a result of those concerns, the uh, two particular access areas are going to be controlled by emergency management services and police. What is their, their presumed response time in the event of an emergency, and isn't that a uh, 
a potential in and of itself for causing uh, a huge catastrophe if in fact they don't get there before anyone else does to open up the gates. Um, so it's going to be dated. So the police and emergency management, I think, you know, it's, this, this uh, question should be referred to them. And well, but, you're, but you're, you're basing this, though, on input you got from the community. So what was the community's concern that prompted the need for a closure of those two points? I don't know, the closure of, of keeping these roads <coughs> that was a, that was a result the, uh, of the community's concern. Some of the, uh, um, okay, an example is say, Illinois area. We're going through, uh, we have to get easements through two private properties. And, you know, they didn't want the road open, and they didn't want all the, this uh, daily traffic going through. So they, part of the agreement or the easement uh, that we got from them was that it would be used for emergency purposes. Well, so then it's not the community, it's the landowners. Um, yeah, well, okay, they're, they're part of the community also. Right, I, I understand, but I just wanted to be clear on, on what level of public participation had been involved in that decision. Thank you. Okay, I understand you have a time limit. Uh, you have to have a little meeting. Yeah. Okay. Can I say something? Okay, one more. Go ahead. I'm familiar with the title of why I close emergency exit does not define all emergency situations. And I think that is not correct. In my opinion, this situation, in case there's a huge emergency, like a tsunami or something, and people get killed, I think it's going to open up the liability for the city. That's my thought. I live in Canada. Okay. You want to answer that question or uh, statement? <laughs> I think we're making the situation. That, let's, let's say if we didn't do anything, would the city be liable? Well, I think the title is. Oh, wrong. I don't know. Well, this should be changed to wrong. Okay. Something like it's that. It's not a wrong. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, Thank you very sorry. much, Brian. <laughs>
when when a bicyclist determines that it's safer for them to be in the lane of traffic, they are allowed to do that. And a lot of times, motorists get mad. They, they talk to me, you know, I get a lot of feedback. And they say, well, you know, he shouldn't be there. And I say, well, actually, it's safer for them to be there. So, you know, they may, you may not see that there's a pothole over there or glass in the road. But if they determine it's safer to be in the road, that's where they should be. Now, um, the resolution that I <laughs> had put together um, is kind of a compilation of um, things that have come up as I've been doing this. It's kind of been modified from the first resolution that was passed by Hawaii Kai last, um, I think it was May. And each of these items is important um, to bicycle safety. And I, as I've done this, I've found out that there's a little bit of misunderstanding about what this resolution is for and why, why we're doing this. Um, it's not necessarily about a lot of money. Most of these things on the resolution can be done with very little money or simply changing the way we are doing things now. So um, I wanted to make that clear. I, I'm not Would you sure. go over some of the uh, 12 points that you have here? Certainly. Some of them, anyway. Yes. So, for example, um, <coughs> many times I see um, the, the maintenance trucks uh, doing the trimming of the trees, and then they, they pull away and the, the tree knocks some of the branches down, and, and they don't even think that to go back and look and pick up what they um, dropped <coughs> in the shoulder of the road. And a bicycle comes along and they have to, you know, swerve around. <coughs> um, another example is the um, trash bins or the recycling bins or um, waste, the green waste that is left out. You know, it'd be very easy for people to just not put it on the road. But I, I come across many times when people put it in the bike lane or they put it in the shoulder and they don't, they don't think that somebody's gonna be inconvenienced or put in danger because of their actions. Um, trimming trees, you know, um, some of this stuff is just regular maintenance. Uh, the, the roadways, uh, especially the highways, they um, get encroached with grass growing along the edges and they take away the, the um, width of the, the bike lane where bicyclists can ride. So if we regularly maintain that and clean that out, it makes it much easier for bicyclists to ride through areas safely. Um, another point on here is implementing safe um, bike, bike school buses and walk school buses under the Safe Routes to School program. And I'm not sure how many of you are aware of that, but basically what it is is two people, two adults escorting kids to school, and one is in front one is in back and we have kids in the middle. And we establish a route that along the way we pick up the kids and take them to school. And uh, this program has been around for a while. This, the state has gotten money for it. And it's unfortunate that we have two, two routes in the whole state that are safe routes to school. Um, so I felt it really important to include that particular item. And that item also goes together with our um, the bike ed program that HBL does every year. Um, that program is funded by the, um, I'm so nervous. <laughs> 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 um, that, that program is um, funded by um, the registration fees from bicycle, bicyclists. So it's not like we're taking money or funds from other programs. That's funded by bicyclists themselves. And it's an excellent program that teaches fourth graders how to ride their bikes safely. So these two programs go hand in hand. And you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, and um, in fact, the, the school that my sons just went to had their program. And some of those kids have never been on a bike. They don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> and I, 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 I just, I almost can't believe that. And I think that's so sad. Yeah. So I, this. This resolution is really important. I think also as a, um, for the public in general, to provide opportunities for kids and adults to get out and really exercise and enjoy what we have here. I mean, you know, I ride along Hawaii Kai along the coastline and it is beautiful and I 
take my kids out into um, what I call the country out at Kamiluki, um, Kamiluki Valley, and we see things that other people don't see when they're driving by in their, in their cars. So this whole thing is just really about making bicycling aware, you know, bicyclists, um, getting the word out about bicycling in general, and trying to promote safety for people and making them feel like they can go out and, and actually ride their bikes with their families or um, to school or whatever as, as alternate methods of getting to places, as well as just exercising and having fun. Okay. Um, at this point, um, since copies were mailed <coughs> to everybody, and uh, I was wondering if anybody has any comments on this resolution. Okay. Identify yourself, please. <clears throat> These are two points on your resolution. Uh, one is number nine. I'm not exactly sure what a traffic sensor group is. Oh, yeah, okay, I forgot to mention that one. That's very misunderstood, and it took me a long time to understand it as well. Um, you may have noticed these um, boxes. Well, if you're in a car, you might not see them, but if you're on the road, you'll see a box. It's about, um, I don't know, five and a half by five and a half feet square. <coughs> and it has a little, um, it looks like caulk actually, black caulking. And it's a sensor and it works based on the metal. And so if you're a car and you drive right onto it, the light knows that you're there. Okay, now for bicyclists, some bicyclists don't have enough metal, but um, as long as you have some metal and you're lined up in, on the sensor, you're um, close enough, it will trigger the light. What's happening in some places with the city now is they've been paving over the roads as a quick fix to um, the potholes that just pave over the entire road. And when they do that, they don't go back and recut those sensor loops. So you have to have a lot more metal in order to trigger the light. And bicyclists cannot trigger those lights anymore when that's paved over. And so, um, Somebody said, oh, you could get magnets for the bike. That, that, based on my research, that doesn't work. And it's also not based on the weight, it's based on the metal. My second question is regards to number 10. You, are you in support of reconfiguring the- Can you speak a little louder, yeah. please? We can't hear you. Are you in support of uh, reconfiguring the entire state exam for driver's license? Oh, no, you know, I'm not sure how the exam works. I, I, my understanding is that they have a pool of questions, right. and any given test, they they pick out some to put on the test. I just want more questions in there about bicycling. That, that's all number 10 is about. Okay. Any other, oh, okay. Question, and identify yourself. Uh, John Valera, American Planning Association. Okay. Um, hi. You did a good job. Thank you. Um, yes. Under <laughs> number 12, I would just like to um, make a suggestion because um, my understanding is that for the Safe Routes to School program, uh, nonprofits are helping the DOT to implement the program, whereas DOT is the uh, more of the, the one who issues the grants. Yeah, um, I, I did receive something from Brennan and I haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, <laughs> HBL actually applied for a grant through the Safe Routes to School program. And in there, we have a component for um, the pilot project in Hawaii Kai, the, the bike bus that I started with another bicycle bus. Um, those grants were to be announced in February. My understanding is Mitchell it still hasn't been announced who's going to get that. Um, so I don't know if I can really give you a complete answer and maybe I need to get back to you on that. But yes, you are correct. The state is working on that. It, um, from my perspective, however, I want to see what's being done. I mean, okay, we have all this money, now what What have we done with it? Is it just more studies, or have we actually gone out and tried to put together a manual of how to put together safe routes to school? I haven't seen anything like that. And if I could just uh, suggest um, rewarding number 12 to say something like this, help nonprofits to implement bike and walk school buses under the federal Safe Routes to School program. 
that change would be fine with me. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. You know, my Thank question you. is not going to be related to that resolution. But it's about, I live in Kaneohe and I see places where there are, used to be bike lanes, but they're not painted anymore. Or, and uh, I see some state highways, especially on Nimitz Highway and Kaneohe, in Kaneohe Town, some city streets too. And the signage, yeah, like a Kaikira Highway, it used to be signed. A few signs, but now I don't see the signs. They took it away. Okay, I think number seven, uh, number six point, painting <coughs> of painting, and that, that covers it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any other, um, okay, I guess the first change would be number twelve. Uh, the twelve from the AIP uh, reword that. Okay. Um, would you like me to restate it, Mr. Chair? Yeah, restate it. Yeah. Um, help nonprofits to implement bike and walk school buses under the federal uh, safe yeah. routes to school program. Okay. The, uh, the million dollars that, that we're asking uh, Gordon to go support for the mayor, do we know what it's for? No, no, that's the million dollars is not mentioned in this. Yes, it is in the bottom. We're at, be it further results. Oh, I see. Okay. Do we, do we know what that million dollars is for? We, we're, we're asking Gordon to go support this. The million dollars is for the projects identified in the city and county's transportation improvement projects for bikeways. There's they have their short-term and long-term range plans, and it's all it, it essentially mirrors the master bicycle. Plan, which is being updated now with Helbert Hauser and Fee. This is in the, the, the city's TFD. Everything, yes, all the projects are laid out. The million dollar <coughs> million dollars in this budget, I'm I don't know whether or not that differs from the amount that was set forth last year. What about the state? And with regards to the region transportation plan, the question that you raised, the region transportation plan was made uh, was worded very uh, generally so that any project that was consistent with the bike plan, city or state, up to a certain limit, uh, would be eligible for federal funding. So if it was part of the plan, then it would be eligible for federal funding, therefore it would be eligible for, it would be consistent with the region transportation plan. Why not? What about the state? Uh, are they doing anything? Or are they not participating in this? Uh? <coughs> um, no. No. Lingo, she's not putting money in? Well, the state has its own projects. Um, you know, to be honest with you, there is more I would love to put in here. I just feel that we need to do something now. And my plan is that um, I'm going to, all the neighborhood boards should have a, um, consider the resolution by the end of May. I'm hoping I'm working on that. In June, I'm going to have a press conference. I've invited the governor and I've invited the mayor. And I'm going to formally present all the resolutions. Hopefully this one will be among them. And with a list of supporters of these. So if I don't, if the um, governor isn't there, I would, will request a personal meeting with her to go over this. Um, but it, as a direct answer to your question, the state does have some funding. I, I just don't have the details. Um, we're asking, uh, anybody for or against this would like to have your comments? I have one last comment. <clears throat> I'm, not a, I'm a new member to this committee, but I'm not exactly sure how many safety issues have been brought up. Has the uh, issue of pedestrian safety been brought up before this committee? Um, because I don't want us to vote on one issue that would preempt safety of pedestrians well, we'll, at this point. Yeah. We're, right now, before us is on bicycle, uh, bicycle Correct. safety. Correct. Okay. But that's what we're, we're talking about that now. Yeah. Uh, you can bring it up on a new business. Uh, may okay. I make a comment about that? No. We're <laughs> trying to get... Okay. Can I give a comment regarding what he's saying? Because if it relates to your bike, uh, your pedestrian safety is related to... Well, 
let's keep to the what we have a resolution on bicycle safety and yeah go ahead go ahead Rob. what we're trying to get across is that you have made a motion and seconded at this point in time, <coughs> the only thing that's open is for you to speak for or against the resolution or to make an amendment to the resolution asking questions of a hundred people here is not in order you're speaking for or against the resolution and what I'm hearing is a lot of people have questions uh, by parliamentary procedure you can have uh, you can stand and say I have a question and get permission to ask a question but you're supposed to be debating whether you're for or against the resolution once you've done that then you can take a vote on it. are there any more so uh, Shane is questions against on this resolution or against, yeah. so or against. against it I support it with reservations I okay. really okay. wouldn't okay. want okay. to can we yes. go ahead just for parliamentary procedure I'm going to say I'm against it to bring up that point that it may affect pedestrian safety I mean I mean I'm just parliamentary trying to bring this in to say okay. that it does relate Thank you. May I just make one comment, please? I no. <laughs> I want to get to the, the, the vote on this resolution. Call for the question. Yeah. Can we call a question now? Those who are in favor of this resolution, signify by aye. 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 Uh, those who are against this resolution, anybody abstaining from this resolution? Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Pass. All right. Okay, next is the Public and Private Partnership Subcommittee findings. Um, there is a letter from the AIP. I think the copies have been distributed in the regular thing. Um, I'd like to know if. Um, are there any comments from the CAC members first on this uh, public and private partnership report? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Scott, I think everybody's in. Then can we call for a question whether we will accept this from the subcommittee? Is there any discussion? Um, can we have a, uh, those in favor of this then? So first, can we have a motion to accept this? Motion to accept. Yeah. Okay. A second? Second. Okay. Um, are those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, those in not? Those abstaining? Okay. Okay, then the resident, and then we have accepted the subcommittee's report. Thank you. Um, other business? Is there any other business? Okay. I'm now passing it over to the vice chair. Go ahead. Tom Dunnell. Yeah, okay. You know, I know it's very, very difficult to get meeting rooms downtown. But this meeting room is not conducive to committee deliberations. It's a good council hearing room. And if it's possible to find a room where we can all face each other instead of having this kind of okay. audience uh, authorities up there, it would be very good. Well. <clears throat> And we'll I know it's a difficult yeah. problem. We'll see if the uh, umpo can do something about this, maybe within some other rooms. Okay. But can, I, can I say something? I think it's because of the council meetings. Otherwise, it would have the same room upstairs. We have a full council meeting board. Our past two meetings, we had to hold it here. Right. 
Yeah. I know there are all reasons for yeah. it. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? This is my first time here. But the formality comes, I think, because of these signs here. It also, it's almost like our neighborhood board meeting. You sit there and the audience is here. I don't know, but uh, when I first walk in, it is the arrangement. But these cards also, they are part of the member. The whole thing, we're all together, but it appears like these are the power group or whatever. Okay. Thank you very much. Now I'll pass it over to our vice chair. I have a suggestion. I think the CAC should have a newsletter to go out to its various members, too. And I would like to have this discuss it maybe at the next meeting. Because I think communication is very important. And what we do here within this room is fine. But I think what we discuss should go out to the various neighborhood boards, the various organizations. So that I feel that maybe uh, we'll have more contact, more communications. We presently are now for the policy committee. Uh, we do have a, there'll be a section there for the CAC report. That's probably the first time we've done it this year. We've done it before, we haven't done it before. But I think now we should try to get a newsletter out sometime. So I'd like to offer that as a possible discussion point for next year, for the next meeting in, in May. Thank you. Anybody disagree? I think it's a good idea. Okay. What, what's, oh, okay. okay. what's the difference between having a newsletter and having our agendas and minutes distributed to every neighborhood? I don't believe the neighborhood boys would really care about the agenda so much. I think a newsletter informing them what has been going on, what we've uh, discussed at these meetings, would be more meaningful to them. That's my reason. Well, anyway, this should be discussed at the next I was gonna say. Item, the in, item in the next meeting. I, item in the next May, in the May meeting. Okay. I take it back. <laughs> okay. Um, next is Oahu uh, uh, MPO's meeting highlights. Marion? Okay, uh, there have been no meetings of either the Technical Advisory Committee or the Policy Committee, but we do have a uh, Technical Advisory Committee meeting scheduled for Friday, May 16th, 10 a.m. Uh, in the Department of Transportation's fifth floor conference room. Or you can go on to announcements then. Okay, thank you. Um, as I mentioned last month, uh, the Oahu MPO is going to be updating the Oahu Regional Transportation Plan to include up to the year 2035. Um, for this effort, we're asking for participation from you folks in a working group to brainstorm on methods and strategies for the public participation effort. Um, there's a sign-up sheet on the table over there, and it's a pink sheet. We can have up to 12 CAC members on this working group, and we will we anticipate one meeting probably within uh, the last two weeks of this month, where we'll ask you to brainstorm on some public communication <coughs> methods. Um, and then once our consultant is on board, uh, hopefully in January of 09, and they start to develop our community outreach plan, we'll ask for feedback on that from you. Again, another brainstorming type of a session. Um, so uh, up to 12 people are welcome to sign up for that working group. <coughs> also, it's about that time, uh, we'll be electing a chair and vice chair for fiscal year 2009. So I'm asking folks to sign up for the subcommittee for uh, elections. Um, and that is a purple sheet on the table over there. Again, uh, same thing, we're limited to 12 CAC <laughs> members for any subcommittee. So please sign up today if you're interested in, in meeting. We anticipate just one meeting for that subcommittee, 
probably during the first two weeks of May. That's it. Okay. Um, are there any other announcements from the floor? Okay. Um, are there any objections to adjourning? <laughs> no? Fine. We're out before 4.30. Thanks, <laughs> 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 <laughs>